Hey, Toby. How you doing, Tobes? We're a good boy. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Always going to be doing well when you got a nice fresh box of plants to open up. Okay, already started the opening process. You know, with the addresses and everything on top figured, is it that exciting watching the top getting cut open? Maybe. I know some people are into that, but I thought I'd just skip over that. It's fine. No big deal. What I have here is a package of plants from Green Emerald Goddess Gardens on Etsy. I may have that name wrong. If I do, it'll be up here on the screen. I'll also link them down in the description. I'm getting ahead of myself. I haven't really seen the plants yet, so if they don't look great, then that link probably won't be there, but here we are. And this was a bit of a surprise because I ordered these plants a long time ago. Like, I wanna say two, maybe even three months ago, but it was cold, so they held the order, which I appreciate, and I really appreciate that they didn't hold the order until like May, which a lot of places do. I'm in zone six. So for a lot of online plant places, they'll be like, well, if you're in zone six, we'll ship out in May. And I'm like, but I don't, like there's, there's really no risk where I live. It's not going to get that cold, but that's the way it goes. Anyways, there goes the invoice. On first glance, everything in here's looking pretty good. It looks like things are wrapped with a foil. That's nice. I assume that this is supposed to be on one of those plants. Someone lost their pants during shipping. That happens. Oh, and I have no idea who Cheryl White is. I don't know her, but my name's over here. That's me. Don't know what's going on there. Doesn't matter. Let's get to the fun part with the plants. I don't, I don't know what this is. Thought maybe it was a heat pack, but it doesn't feel like it. I like the way the packaging's looking here. They put some styrofoam inserts, which is great. Let's control the temperature in the package. I'll go ahead, get all these unloaded and start cutting them open and see how the plants are looking. Everything's looking pretty good here. I will, just to roll it back to something I just said in the beginning, hopefully that fountain isn't too loud. This first video I'm filming with that on. If it is, I'll be sure to unplug that next for the rest of the video so I film while I'm out here. So apologies if it is obnoxious. I, I don't know yet. Okay, but the fun stuff. Look at all these beautiful plants. I have here two Brugmansias, an Aphalandra, and a couple of curtains. I got excited and already opened one of the curtains up, but they're the same. I got two of them. So we will see those at the end. And at first glance, what I'm seeing here looks pretty cool. I like that this, these foils, I think that's nifty because sometimes when you order plants online, they just, they don't look that pretty when you unpack them is basically all it comes down to. So this is nice having something to set them in from right when you take them out of the box. You don't have to immediately get them repotted or put into a catch pot or something like that. So I don't mind this. I think it's cool. And I especially like that the pot itself is also labeled. That's nifty. So not going to confuse things. Put some spikes in here, some wooden stakes to help keep them from moving around too much during shipping. I don't think that really worked out to the benefit of this plant. You can see that well, what happened there, but that's okay. Also seeing a bunch of gel in the bottom there. Hopefully that's not in the potting mix because that's not my favorite thing. I'm hopeful that that's just something that they do for shipping. The best way to figure that out is just go ahead and get this opened up and see what things are looking like in here. Not a ton going on in there. Okay. It is much bigger than I expected. There's some leaves that have come off there. Not the end of the world. It happens during shipping, especially with Brigmansias. I usually just assume that they're going to be just sticks when I get them this time of year. So it's nice to see that they do have some foliage on them. Part that the tripod's moving because the dog keeps rolling around over on top of it. All right. I think I'll probably leave the stake in that one just to help support those growths if, if it needs it. Does it need it? Actually, this feels pretty firm and uh, nicely rooted. So I don't think it needs the stake in there, which is great. I'll save this and use it on my orchids or I mean, just whatever else I might need it for. The roots are looking really good. I'm not seeing much of any of that gel in here. So I don't know if it's actually in that potting medium or if it was just in there for shipping. There was a little bit on the bottom, but that could have just been because it was underneath the pot. I don't know. Whatever they've used here for potting mixture is interesting though. It's very, Spongy. I don't really know how to, to describe it. This looks like regular potting soil, but it has um, an odd feel to it. So perhaps there is a bunch of that gel in there. I don't know. This is a butterfly pink. It says it right down there, butterfly pink, Brugmansia or angel's trumpet. Toby, you gotta move, bud. You gotta move. This one has just really nice, pretty pink, you know, trumpet shaped flowers. It's an angel's trumpet. Not a ton to say about it, but it's one of the pink varieties that usually has 
more of a vibrant pink flower on it, which is kind of tricky to find, I found, with a lot of Brugmansias. Oftentimes, the flowers tend to be more of a uh, muted tone, sort of subtle, pastelish, which the butterfly pink likely will be as well, but it's just going to be a little bit more intense of a pink. Not like a bright bubblegum pink, but I think you get it. Go ahead and pop open this other one. This one in here is in Mango Crush Brugmansia. Yeah, lots of leaves came off there. Again, not a big deal. It's a, more of an orange flower that has some pink striping in it. Both tones are pretty subtle, but still a really pretty flower. And again, these are feeling pretty sturdy, so I don't think this needs that stake in it. Whenever I have foils around a pot, I always make sure to pop a hole in the bottom. We don't have to worry so much about the plants, the roots getting overly saturated and rotting. Off to a good start. Both these Bergmansias look about what I expect them to look like after they've been shipped, and they're a decent size. I will be potting those up into something larger. But I would say I might even double their pot size. I know that there's that rule of thumb to only go an inch or two larger with the pots, but these tend to have pretty fast growing roots. I think it would be okay to go ahead and bump these up into, I would say, at least a six inch pot. Those were fun. Now I want to open up this Aphalandra. This is an Aphalandra uh, Heart Wigiana. I believe that's what I ordered. Oh, wow. That's way, way, way bigger than I expected. So far, I'm pleasantly surprised with the size of these plants. You usually, when something's listed in a four inch container, I just assume that it's not going to be very big. But so far, so good. This one's roots are even coming out the top of the pot. Hopefully that's in focus so you can see. So here's another one of those spongy root systems. That's probably how it's gonna be with all of these, I bet. This one does have a bunch of gel in the bottom of that pot. Again, that could just be for shipping. I don't know. Don't hate it. That's something that does have its uses. I don't hate the gel. It doesn't bother me that much, it, but I, the way I water my plants tends to be more frequent. So I just find it to be pretty unnecessary. This is a great looking plant though. It's really thick, nice rooted start. The uh, Heartwood Gianna is like the classic Aflander. They get really tall. I think up to about 15 inch long red flower spikes on them that have little yellow flowers that come out and along the stems. And I believe this one blooms in the fall, I think. I know I've seen them at my botanicals and bloom in the winter. They're a really nice aphalandra. Great if you just want that tropical feel. A pretty easy one to grow to. They respond very well to pruning. So they'll get long and leggy. Sometimes you can cut them back by like 50% generally. I'll do that in the, I would say, uh, late spring, early summer, just depending on where the plant is with its growth, and it'll get nice and bushy. And the more tips you have on the plant, then the more flower spikes you're likely to have and get to see in the fall and winter time. This is good so far, three out of three, impressed. Happy with what's going on here. I don't know what this is. It's not on the invoice, so I'm assuming it's a freebie that got sent with everything else. It's nice, no idea what it is. Came wrapped with this care shoot for an Acalpha macrophylla, which is the copper leaf plant, so. So I'd say it's safe to assume that's probably what that is. Try my best to get this out of here without disturbing it too much. Okay, look at that. Cute little plant pug. Got some decent roots on it. I'll make sure to get that potted up right away. That's not gonna last long without a good moisture retentive soil around it. Probably could have gone a little bit smaller on the pot, but this is the smallest one I had nearby. It should be fine. Those are tough plants. Okay, last but certainly not least, like I said, I had two of these. I already opened one of them. This is a croton. It's a special croton that I've wanted for a while. The variety is called Tamara. It's going to assume the packaging is going to be the same on this one as it has been for all the others. Hey, look at that. Doesn't look too bad. Get this out of there and try and Wow, okay, lots of gel. Lots and lots of gel. Try and get as much of that out of there as I can. All right, so there's that one. And then here is the other one. They both look pretty good. You can tell that they had some shipping stress, but it doesn't look like anything very dramatic. You know, crotons, they're one of those plants where just the slightest thing that's not to their liking and they'll throw a fit. Some varieties are more sturdy than others, but I'm just, I'm not surprised that there would be some leaves on here that are looking kind of sad. The Tamara Crotons clearly look different than what you typically would expect from a Croton. What I like about them is they have a really nice creamy variegation on them. You can see there's some pretty deformed leaves there that it started to put out there on its newer growth. I would imagine that as these cuttings get going and we get some warmer temperatures, that should be okay. These are, fairly well rooted, but I can see those cracks in the soil. So I'm going to leave these in these containers for a while, probably at least a couple more months to let them root out into those and fill them out instead of bumping them up a pot size and putting them through even more stress. But this is more of that really spongy soil that I assume has this really water retentive gel in it. So I am going to be sure that they stay 
in a place that's really warm, very brightly lit because I just, I don't want them to rot. Cold plus damp with crotons, kiss of death. I mean, that's really going to be the case for most tropical plants, right? But they'll need some more time to go ahead and get rooted in. This one also has more of a loose mix down below it, so they're not heavily rooted, but they have new growth on them, so I'm not bothered by the fact that they were sent out. If you've watched some of my haul videos before, I tend to get pretty upset when things are shipped out as an established plant when they have like one root on them and it's like clearly not at all established. These are established, you can see they have new growth on them. It'll take some time for them to like fully establish themselves and start pushing out some healthier growth on them, but it's kind of windy, so I probably should have put that F in something heavier. Once these get going and growing, the foliage on them, they have that nice long, more oval shaped leaves than just your regular croton, the petras that have kind of a fat leaf on them. Variegation on them has various shades of green and cream, which I absolutely love. It's just something different. It's more soft and subtle. It's not what I think of when I hear a croton. I always think loud and bright or the gold dust variety, which is just the green with the yellow speckles. As these grow and start to look more like your typical type of house plant you know and they get a foot two feet tall and they have lots of branching on them they have a totally different look inside the house as a house plant than your regular crotons with those bright vibrant multicolored leaves this is something a little bit more subtle and soft and i think has more of a clean look to it don't get me wrong i love those bright vibrant colorful crotons but it's just nice to have something different within a few months they've had some bright light and some warmth these are going to fill out some more and they'll look a lot better. I don't think these look bad as it is. It's just you can see where the leaves were suffering after those cuttings were taken, and that's okay. They'll grow out of those, and heck, they're crotons, so I wouldn't be shocked if in the next couple weeks they drop most of their leaves anyways just because they were put in a box and shipped. I don't know, fingers crossed that won't happen, but if it does, it's to be expected, not the end of the world. There it is, bunch of new plants, all from that Etsy seller. I'm pleased with how everything looks. The gel isn't the end of the world, it just doesn't fit my style of watering, like I mentioned. I don't really consider that a bad thing. It can be really helpful with getting plants rooted and established, so that's okay. In a few weeks when temperatures start to get more stably warm, meaning like I don't want lows to be dropping below 70, ideally daytime temperatures in the 80s, upper 70s, I'll go ahead and bump these Brigmansias up into some larger pots. There's no reason to do it right now, because where I live, it's still kind of chilly. Even in my grow space, I'm keeping that more on the cool side this year just for ease of maintenance. But it'll be nice and toasty here before we know it, and then those can get moved up into a larger pot. Comment down below. Love hearing from everybody. It's got some fun new plants coming your way. It's that time of year when it's safer to order things and starting to see some new selections out at the nurseries and in the online retailers. Different varieties with the Brigmansias, let us know. Those are a really popular plant. They're pretty easy to grow. They have a nice fragrance to them, at least most of them do. They have a nice fun form and shape to them as these get going. These are just starter sticks. This is nothing like what these will look like by the end of the season or by the end of the year, let alone a couple years from now. The really big, beautiful plants with some really fun flowers on them. Hey, so hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Oh, and I did want to mention that the packing slip that's in here it came with a detailed care sheet for every single one of those plants, which is really nice. As always, and most importantly, everybody, Toby, why are you so tired? It's such a beautiful day. Wake up, Toby. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.